everyone, I'm Kelsey Matheson and I'm back with another video for the Divi Project. So I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a success, success coach for women and I'm a speaker and I have partnered with the Divi Project to learn more about cryptocurrencies and what this whole financial revolution is all about. And today I'm here with Thomas Wang, who is also an entrepreneur and a speaker, and he's going to chat with me today about cryptocurrencies, why he's involved, and we're also going to dive into some questions about why investing is something, you know, some, in something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Divi coins um, are more challenging for women. Sure. So thanks, Thomas, for being here with me. And um, let me let's let's start out by you introducing yourself and you know talk about the projects that you're involved in. Sure. Like uh, Kelsey said, I'm an entrepreneur based off of Orlando, Florida. I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. My parents did the restaurants, uh, tons of restaurants as I was growing up. Now I'm involved in the restaurant chain in Orlando, I'm the expansion and public relations director. So we're focused on massive expansion all across the United States. And uh, I also speak, public speaker, coach. I also create online courses and digital content. My most recent project would be cryptocurrency, which I officially started in March. So about six months or seven months, seven months in, and it's definitely a whole world of information, ups, downs, roller coasters. But learning the ins and outs, I see the long term of this of this industry of the digital currency industry exploding a hundred, if not a thousand fold over the next couple of years. So. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for the warm introduction and I uh, can't wait to hear the questions and uh, give my feedback on the industry. Yeah, thank you. So you said that you got involved in, in March? Yep. When did you first hear about cryptocurrencies? 2009. Uh, I first heard about Bitcoin when it first launched in college. I had a friend, a high school friend who in college at the time was really into the technical stuff, the computer stuff. And I was more of a social person, extrovert. And as he introduced me to Bitcoin, he offered me a hundred dollar buy-in on his project. He was going to mine it. He was going to trade it and do all this stuff. And I honestly uh, did not know anything about the industry. Didn't thought he was just making this stuff up. So I declined the offer. And um, kind of as I progressed and learned more throughout the years, I realized that that one hundred dollar offer could have been about one hundred and seventy-five million if that was purchased directly in Bitcoin. Now, of course. That hundred dollar buy in 2009 could have been for mining, could have been for supplies, could have been for a lot of different things. But if it was straight Bitcoin purchase in 2009, it would be about 175 million dollars today. So I missed out on an opportunity. But hey, there's lots and lots of opportunities to come. So that's amazing. So I have a question. Did you are you still in contact with him? Like, do you know? what his situation financially is from from that project yeah so in 2009 when he started really getting into cryptocurrency mining trading and doing the digital side of things what had happened was that he kept on posting updates on social media and say hey look this is really exploding hey i think people should get in and then there was a point where he just fell off and i think at that falling off point was when he really made it and <laughs> he no longer really cared what other people thought because in 2009 to 2012 when he was really pushing it, Bitcoin wasn't you know, that popular, wasn't worth that much. And people, maybe a fraction of a percentage of the global population knew about it. So, um, you know, they call it, they called it monopoly money. They called it fake money. They called it all this stuff back in the days. And now we're really seeing the industry, you know, explode. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he owned a small island with a couple of mansions now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, so then, so knowing all of that, what then encouraged you to be like, okay, I'm going to buy, I'm going to, I'm going to figure more, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to buy my first currency. Sure. So last year in December, um, one of my friends that's really into gold and silver trading, she offered me to go into crypto with her. She said, you should just buy some, trust me, it's $760 a coin. I was like, $760 a coin. That's crazy. What am I buying here? I still didn't really know. And then fast forward to March, I really sat down and downloaded Coinbase and started looking into it and realized, wow, it's like 2,200, but three months ago it was at 760. So that's a three X return. What's going on? And so in March, I purchased uh, a little bit of Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin, about a couple thousand dollars worth, just to kind of see um, what this hype was all about. And then within that, I would say two week period, I saw like a 
35 or 40 percent increase in my portfolio and i was like wow that was fast what's happening and uh so right around march was when i was just essentially i was just buying and selling buying and holding and selling depending on you know the market fluctuation and fast forward to today i'm in multiple coins i do tra uh, auto trading auto mining i'm in different platforms now and uh, i work with a, a a very large team that is local and online um, that also do similar concepts, auto trading, mining, and uh, buying and selling, holding. So uh, it's definitely an industry that's just on its brink. I would say about one or two percent of the global population even still even know about it or hear about it or get involved. And um, I, I personally can't wait to see where the next five, ten years takes crypto. So Wow. Yeah, because I'm literally just figuring it all out for myself. Like I just opened up a Coinbase account. So, yeah. you know, I, I would think maybe we might have to set up another call where you can maybe coach me through everything you just talked about, like the mining and all of that. It's like, sure. I just, you know, I, I just bought myself $50 worth of Bitcoin just so I could figure out how to right. do it. That's, that's where I'm at. So it would be okay. really great to maybe- um, One of the most common questions I get is, Bitcoin's too expensive, $6,000. I can't afford that. I was like, you're looking at it, Full digital coin you can buy fractions they're like oh now you just went over my head because in the united states you can't buy a fraction of a dollar i mean yeah you can get a penny but you can't buy a fraction of a penny so people exactly. are still not understanding fractions of coins and you know trading mining compound. yeah okay, so I didn't understand it either. And I literally created my Coinbase account and I saw that at that time, Bitcoin was worth $4,300 approximately. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, I can't buy a coin. And then when I started playing with, I could either put how much you know Bitcoin or Ethereum I wanted or how much I wanted to spend in US dollars, yeah. I realized that you could buy a percentage of mm -hmm. the coin. You don't have to buy the entire coin. So mm -hmm. I just bought $50 worth just so that I could start playing around with it. Right. Um, but again, like I said, I'm just at the beginning of, of this journey. So um, so how many different, because the thing is, is I feel like there's over a thousand currencies now. Yes. Coinbase, you can only get three. But yes. how many different curren currencies have you purchased? Okay, so from March until now, from March until about June, I only touched the top three, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. The problem with buying and holding was that I was basically up against market valuation. So if the market was down and I couldn't couldn't take it, then I'd sell and then I'd lose money. If the market was up, I would make, you know, a couple hundred bucks, but it wasn't it wasn't creating a sustainable passive income through digital currency that I wanted. It was just like buying stocks and hoping that it went up. But if you only own a one Apple stock and an Apple stock doubles, I mean you get a couple hundred bucks. That's not gonna set you free. And so about three months ago, four months ago, about uh, end of June was when I really started thinking about, okay, there's got to be ways that are people doing this a lot better. Okay. So I found out about uh, cryptocurrency trading, which is essentially like the Forex market where you can trade the US dollar against the Japanese dollar or yen or the euro against the US. And if it's up or down, you can, you can, you can make money off the difference. You can do the exact same thing in crypto world, except the crypto world is a lot more volatile and it operates 24 seven. So the Forex market is only uh, 24 five and it's a lot less volatile. And the crypto world is 24 seven and there's more currencies. And as you can see with the charts, I mean, Bitcoin fell like five, seven percent in the past couple of days. And it's, there's coins that would drop 300% in one day. There's coins wow. that will rise 300% in one day. So just looking at that volatility, if, you, if you're a great trader and you can read the charts, people become full-time crypto day traders and make the money off of, you know, the volatility. Wow. So as far as the question, as far as which, which coins I've entered, so I have Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I dropped my Ethereum and Litecoin because it wasn't moving for me. I bought a little bit of Ripple, uh, which is coin number six or something like that off the top 10. Yeah, I heard of Which, Ripple through my research. Right, and um, I did about a couple hundred dollars in Electronium pre-launch, which was a ICO. So ICOs is initial coin offerings. They happen almost every day. There's like probably five different coins being launched into the market every single day, just like stock IPO. Initial okay. public offering for stocks is called an ICO for a coin. Right. A lot of problems with ICOs is that they flop, right? If you don't have proper management, you don't have proper marketing, proper funding. There's a lot of these variables that come into play. 
So if you're looking at, at getting into a coin pre-launch, like Debbie coin or whatever these other coins are coming up, you have to look into kind of their technical, they call it white pages or technical back background of what's the plan and what's the goal, what's the funding, where's it going to go, what's the mission, what's the, what's right. going to, what's it going to, why is this coin going to outlast these other 1,000, couple hundred, you know, coins yeah. out there? Like a business strategy. What's your strategy? What's your strategy? And once you find a great ICO pre-launch and it's something that you are okay losing on, but you're okay. also, the upside is also a lot more rewarding if it's long-term. So let's say like pre-launch a coin was worth, and this is this is based off my electronium knowledge, but let's say it's worth a penny. Okay, and let's say, well, forecasted, if they can hit their pre-launch funding and they could execute their marketing strategy according to what they say on their pre-launch, then over the next three months or six months, I can really see, I'm confident in really seeing this coin take off. So you buy, let's say, let's say $100 for easy numbers, right? So that's 100, that's uh, 10,000 of these coins. And let's say they're worth one cent. So if they don't go anywhere, that's, I mean, it's $100. But let's say over the course of a couple of months, the valuation explodes, a lot of people are using it, people, there's more demand, then it goes up to five cents. In the crypto world, and for the average investor, and this is what we can talk about in the next topic, a five cent coin, people are looking at that like, why would I buy something worth five cents? They don't get the valuation part, right? They just look at the US uh, current price valuation. But to you, you bought it at a penny. In three months, it's gone up to five. That's mm -hmm. five extra return for something that was, you know, and if you're going to hold on to it, who knows? It might go up to 10 cents, 20 cents, 100. There's coins on the market. This year alone exploded 5,000%. Wow. Right. And so if you get it earlier on, I mean, if you look at the it's a coinmarketcap.com, which holds all of the currency prices. And um, if you just pull back like the year charts of any of these coins, you'll see just like the growth. So that's crazy. Yeah. So now that you are, you know, you have kind of a portfolio of currencies, um, you know, you've talked about trading. Do you also like, can you use them? Cause it's, it's like, it's all in, in my head right now. It's like, it's all, it's in digital land. Yeah. But can I use it to actually purchase something? Like, so yeah. I know that you also have courses on Kajabi like I do and, mm -hmm. and Kajabi um, accepts Bitcoin as a payment. Yeah. And that was one of the, that was basically one of the, the, you know, one of the reasons why I was like, I, you know, I was curious because I initially, when I saw that Bitcoin was a currency, I was like, I'm just going to ignore that. Cause I really don't know what that is. You know, like the whole kind of monopoly money thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is. So I, you know, but then I heard about Divi project and they were talking about getting more women involved investing. Yeah. I thought, you know what? I remember Bitcoin being there. I feel like mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, I have a responsibility to know what this is. Yeah. And, but what I don't understand is then, you know, I know that you can purchase. So somebody could purchase my course, for example, with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Do you use your coins to purchase things? Yes. Like tangible things? Yes. So, um, and uh, I'd like to give this analogy because I've actually been teaching crypto for the past month, ever since I've been posting about it and getting more experience. People have been reaching out. The analogy I have is like a couple hundred years ago, we started uh, truly bartering uh, in civilization through goods cows for clothes for food for this for that grains and, things like that i think that's how banking started it was all then about it started there yeah. yep and then it shifted to precious metals then it shifted to coins silver copper gold coins from precious metals to coins and then it shifted to fiscal currency okay and now in 2000 and i would say 2010 was really the, the kicking kicking notch kicking year jump start year of of digital currency and the analogy I have is like, um, the second analogy I like to reference is if you've ever seen the movie Star Wars, um, whenever somebody's bounty is being paid, no one hands over gold or, or a suitcase of dollar bills. It's all beamed like 10 trillion ecton ectonics, right? Through the ether into their digital wallets, right? And the digital this can be converted to digital that. And so there's no actual physical transactions happening. It's all digital space. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about the future of currency exchange, how more and more people are moving from paper money to uh, banks and checks, then it was shifted to PayPal. Now PayPal, now there's like 10 of these services. There's Venmo, there's Square Cash, there's 
bank to bank. There's all of these digital services because no one really wants to mail you $10 or mail your check anymore. Yeah. So the next phase of the evolution of currency is crypto, which is digital currency. And right now you can only use Bitcoin to purchase certain things, basically certain websites that have the conversions. Um, governments are really big against crypto right now because it's decentralized. So the government, if the government cannot have control on the, on the currency itself, they cannot tax it, they cannot regulate it. And so as more of this money is being shifted from banks to the digital market, it's becoming more and more troublesome for government regulation, for especially taxation. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so the easiest way to spend cryptocurrency or the easiest way I should say to spend Bitcoin because it's number one worldwide accepted currently is to get what they call a BitPay card. It's a debit card, so Visa debit cards, BitPay.com, but it, it links your Coinbase wallet to that physical debit card. So anywhere that accepts a Visa, it will pull. But the issue with purchasing in Bitcoin is that let's say like you bought Bitcoin. So let's, let's say you bought a whole coin at 6,000, right? And you're like, great. Now you got a BitPay debit card and it's worth, and inside your card is worth 6,000. You have one full coin. So you have $6,000 in there to use. But let's say a week later, Bitcoin pum- pummels to 5,000. You're literally spending power decreases by 20%. So you're on the mercy of current valuation of Bitcoin. In your, in your card. In your card. So it's like somebody just withdrew a thousand dollars from your. Yes account because it's fluctuating so much yes. you don't it, it's not locked in no it's not locked in so there's pros and cons to that right the pro is if you bought bitcoin this year when it was at eight hundred dollars this year and you've put eight grand you bought let's say 10 coins and you didn't do anything with it that 10 grand is now worth 60 grand or more right or 70 grand so you're like all of a sudden have seven times your money and you didn't do anything wow to me seven times your money in your bank account <laughs> Or not doing anything, right? That's never going to happen. So the vol- people love the volatility of it, and people love the future projection because everybody—not everybody, but a lot of economists—said Bitcoin was a bubble. Bitcoin is—it's not going to happen. I mean, you remember when tablets came out, and people were like, "Why would I need a tablet? I have a phone." And a computer. computer. <laughs> I don't need a hybrid of both. That doesn't make any logical sense. And economists were like, "This is going to tank." It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> Never gonna. No one's gonna ever buy a phablet. That's what they're calling it, phablets and tablets, right? And now everybody owns a tablet. Yeah. If not three tablets. <laughs> My daughter has a tablet, and she's seven. <laughs> yeah, and like Amazon will sell you a tablet night. for like fifty bucks, you know. And when yeah. it first came out, it was like a thousand dollars a tablet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so, is there a way? Um, do you have to have a BitPay uh, card to purchase? No. So if, let's say, I think Newegg.com, I think certain parts of Walmart you can now, but websites that accept Bitcoin, they will basically, during checkout, they'll have their own receiving code and you just send it. So your wallet has a digital encrypted code, usually 32 characters. Um, it's public ledger, meaning that if I somehow had your code, and I looked it up on blockchain.com, which is a public ledger. I can find out how much Bitcoin you have in your wallet. But the issue is that the public ledger, the, the codes don't, they're not attached to your identity. It's impossible just to figure out who owns what wallet. Okay. But let's say Walmart was like, okay, send me one coin to this wallet address to pay for your, whatever you're buying at $6,000. So you would, tra- you would pick, okay, but you would send it from your wallet address to theirs. The moment they received it, then they would they would they would receive that digital currency, and what happens? So you would then ex- Walmart would then exchange the good you just purchased and ship it to you, or whatever right. store you're using. Now, why people use this are are more or are, they're adapting to use this, shifting to this currency is because one, it's decentralized and globally accepted. Okay, mm-hmm. so that means that within the you know, seconds you can receive it as long as it's, as long as the blockchain, there's like a lot of variables in play, but as long as there's not any like backup in the system, but usually within seconds you receive it. And then why people want to do this is because it's shifting wealth from banks to the people. Okay. 
So banks for the last century have had the most amount of wealth built up. That's why every block you have four banks, different banks. They'll take your income, they'll take the, the million, leave it there, we'll give you 0.01%, but they're loaning it back out for 5% mortgages and 25% credit cards. So um, banks want your money because then they can relent it out. The issue with that is that if people keep their money in paper dollars in the bank account, yes, it's secure. It's secure. Okay. People, some people like security. That's fine. But it also goes down again. It also loses value against inflation. So the average yearly inflation of fiscal currency is 3.2%. So if you have a million dollars, you leave it there for a year, 0.01% interest doesn't cover the, the 3.2% loss. So you're losing like $32,000. You're not actually losing through but buying power decreases. So that's why a lot of people, a lot of investors, big moguls, you ask them, they don't really keep cash. I mean, they keep a little bit, right? Like maybe like a percentage of their total portfolio is, is, in, is in cash. Mm -hmm. The rest is divert, spread out across multiple assets that can grow. And crypto is in 2017, one of the most explosive assets you can hold on to. Explosives as far as, uh, like I said, 500%. You know, give me a stock that performed 500% this year. Right. Wow. So. That's crazy. Um, so one more question before I, I, I want to talk a little bit more about um, specifically women and their involvement yeah. in cryptocurrency. But um, if you ever want to cash out, mm -hmm. how, like to, to receive actual tangible money. Yep. Um, how easy is that or how do you go about doing that yeah so as long as your coinbase wallet is registered you're verified and everything your bank accounts verified you just sell what you have and it converts to usd every time you buy and sell there's a transaction fee um it's they're paying the miners there's these digital people that verify everything and um, they get paid per transaction just like how paypal when you send something to somebody there's like a transaction fee mm -hmm. credit card companies would get that difference that's why credit card companies are so big because they'll give you the rewards but they're charging these businesses Four percent every time you charge your Amex, they're giving you one percent back, but they're making three percent off the merchant. Um, so with these, with the withdrawals, the same thing. So let's say you had a Bitcoin, you want to sell it. So you, it, let's say it's worth six thousand. If you sell it, you would have to pay a transaction fee, um, whatever the market rate or whatever that that fee is, and then it would instantly convert to your what they call a USD wallet, a digital USD wallet, and, and Coinbase is called USD wallet. And then you can go from USD wallet to your bank account. And that usually takes 24 hours to register into your bank account. So let's say you, if you want to move into crypto space into the far future, you would never want to put it to your bank account. Right. That's the future of currency because the bank account, what they would do is they would say, okay, where does money come from? You know, you should have kept it here. I, there was a news article that was launched a couple of days ago where like PNC uh, Bank was like about to shut down c customers' bank accounts because they're moving so much money to crypto space. Whoa. Yeah. And it's getting to the point where government regulations are banning it, allowing it, accepting it into the economy. There's It's a global scale. We're talking about a hundred and billion, $150 billion market cap and growing. So 150 billion is bigger than Morgan Stanley. It's bigger than Starbucks. It's bigger than PayPal. It's bigger than all these big companies that are worth so much. Um, and so it is, it's very, once you get into it, it's like having a PayPal account, mm -hmm. right? If you had PayPal funds and you got paid on it, let's say you had $500, um, you could use it anywhere that accepts PayPal or you could withdraw it the next day into your bank account. Mm -hmm. So that analogy would apply exactly to Coinbase, except Bitcoin is not accepted as many places yet. Yeah. So um, you, you mentioned earlier that it was a woman who was involved in silver and yes. gold trading, mm -hmm. but she was the one that kind of really turned you on to cryptocurrency, which I find fascinating because like, you know, like I was mentioning, there are, you know, the, the percentage of people involved in investing, just investing alone, it's, it's mm -hmm. such a small percentage um, of those people are women. Um, so I, um, you know, I love that, the fact that it was a woman who turned you on to this. Um, but so what do you, so why do you think, and it'd be interesting to maybe talk to her too. Why do you think more women aren't involved? And, you yeah. know, and I know, you, you know, your girlfriend and you, you like, did, what, is she involved in this at all? She like, is. she is? Yeah. Oh, great. And so, yeah. you know, you know, why do you think that's the case? And, and why do you think it's more important for women to, for more women to get involved? So 
it's it's been and it's just the history of gender right a long-standing history where you know these bankers are usually men that are 200 pounds right and they have all of these assets and they're usually just you know sitting in their nice office you know the cliche so the issue with, their coins yeah right the issue with with wealth and the transfer the evolution of wealth is I, it's not, and especially in crypto world, it's not, a, in my opinion, not really a gender thing. It's more of a technical understanding. So, like, if you think about like high school, those kids that sat um, in the in in the front row that were geeky and that really like just wanted to know everything, and they got straight A's. But then like the cool kids in the back, like the the, the sports guys or whatever, they just wanted to party and hang out. They didn't care. But the nerdy guys were like, I love the technical stuff, the technical stuff, the equations. Um, I want to learn it all. And it, like the nerds or the the geeks, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> they all are winning right now because they shifted very early on. They saw the the potential of this. And in the gaming industry or the coding industry or the computer industry, it's mainly guys. Mm-hmm. Now, it, it, so it's not really a... If you want to say a female male today, if you want to lump them all together, the gender race, it's not really a difference between why more women don't get into it. It's more of the technical side of of the hobbies of the industry, right? So if cryptocurrency was more of a hobby centric where women were more into it, like fashion or something like that, or beauty care, skin and it was and that was tied right into crypto women would eat that up in a heartbeat but because it's a, a geared around compu- computing algorithms coding um, mathematical equations that's where crypto started computing mathematical equations literally by hand breaking codes and then shifting it into computers breaking the codes but then who would have to code the computers to break the codes somebody would but then it would have to be somebody who, who could code yeah, and, and design the computers to be able to handle the algorithms that were um, getting more and more difficult to break. And so when when the industry shifts to more accessibility, that's when women will, will get involved. As in like, it's as easy as this. Then, you know, with the bit pay and the coin bases being so easy to open up now, if, if you ask me this is 2009, man, I, would, I, I don't know, a single female that was interested in 2009. Now I can list out a bunch of females that I know that are in the industry. Not as much as men, but it's growing. So you see, you're seeing a shift. Yes, for sure, because of the easeability of access of the coin and um, spending it. So, and buying it and selling it and mining it and trading it and all this stuff. Um, especially with the shifts in all the different cryptos coming out, mm-hmm. it's becoming more and more geared towards easeability of access the easier it is for someone to access this the easier it is for anybody not just gender but anybody to to use it yeah Um, yeah so well and it's interesting too because i think you know women are many women are the breadwinner winners in the family you know um now our roles are evolving um Typically, women are also living longer than men. So I think it's, you know, we have a responsibility to secure our future. And it just seems like this is the next evolution of banking, uh, the next step in evolution of banking. So I think it's really important for women to be more involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I also know that, you know, I was reading an article where they they did um, a survey and a lot of uh, but it was high school. It was, or, or, or there was a woman who was speaking to, I think, a group of high schoolers. I think that's what it was. Anyway, the question was why, you know, why do they think that, you know, more men invest? And it was more of a general investing topic. But why do they think more men invest than women? And a lot of the girls say because uh, boys are better than, than math than girls. And um, I find that really interesting and um but i also know that one of the reasons why a lot of parents want their girls to go to an all-girls school Mm -hmm. is because they don't um and again this i'm just generalizing but typically what happens are the girls don't worry about getting straight a's they don't worry about putting their hand up because they know the math or the science question but when they're in a co-ed school 
they don't want to be the smart girl in front of the boys. And so, you know, again, there's just this, it's it within our culture and, and how we're raised, how boys are raised, how girls are raised, these things are changing. And I do think that you're right. Like once Bitcoin becomes a lot, um, you know, more available and especially in um, areas, you know, industries or women are, you know, more of the target audience uh, that I think that there'll be even more of a shift. For example, at my resort at Anamaya, Anamaya um, Resort and Retreat Center, we now accept Bitcoin. And there's a lot of um, third-party companies that if you link it to your website, you can accept Bitcoin now. So there's different services you can add to, like an add-on, where you can accept it. And the like exactly when you have more access accessibility, especially in markets where women are focused on more dominantly, then women will start seeing it as wow, this is a definitely something I want to look into because it's it's a decentralized banking where the people have control of the supply and demand. And I don't know how much you know or, or what the audience knows about the supply and demand of, of Bitcoin itself. So let, focusing on just Bitcoin itself, there's only a 21 million um, coin market cap, which means that right. once this produce is done, they predict that the last coin at the algorithm that's changing at the exponential change in difficulty, it becomes exponentially harder to mine this coin for profitability. So if you're personally mining it with your own computer's GPU, you're not going to be profitable. In 2009, you would have been. Now you're not. So you, people are outsourcing it to what they call massive mining farms. Huge factories filled with hardware that are just running 24-7. They're, pool, they're mine pooling. So they're, pool, they're, they're inserting their coin into these farms. And these farms are basically funding these farms with digital currency to fund to mine more digital currency, right? And so the output is going to be far greater than what they put in. So they're going to get a return on their currency. Of course, the farms will make more money because they're funding all the hardware and everything like that. Um, but Bitcoin is a pure supply and demand kind of currency. So the more people use it, the more companies buy into it, the more investment firms or, or countries or whatever it is purchase it, the higher the price goes. So like the other day, there was a three three billion dollar injection in like three hours like it was literally like three billion dollars went into bitcoin and it took the price from i think it was like 54 to like 59 50 in like three hours and you literally saw the cap of the industry increase by a uh, three billion dollars that means somebody or some companies were like saying i'm in you know i'm investing heavy into this and so as you, and, but we're just touching the tip of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. So if you think about all the companies on a global scale that use banks, that use paper money, that use PayPal, that use credit cards, all of these um, widely accepted transactions, once Bitcoin becomes as popular as PayPal, you're talking 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, a quarter million a coin because there's a finite quantity of it, right? We're putting a cap. The reason why the United States dollar has not gone from, you know, uh, what it is, it's, uh, the reason why it's actually inflated or gone down in value over the past hundred years because the government controls it and they print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars every single year to dilute their debt and try to get out, but they're never, they're really just getting more, itself more into debt. And every single country is doing this because there's no, there's no end to it. What, there's no cap to it. So supply and demand says the more supply you pump into the market, the less demand there is, the less valuation there is to that fiscal dollar. But that's what's so ingenious about crypto, because when you're putting a cap into it and you're embedding it into the Internet where it's like unhackable, well, nothing's unhackable, but it's almost unhackable, then somebody can't just go in and say, OK, I'm going to click a button and print 20 million more of these coins to dilute the market like the government's doing. So people like that because as Consumers, we want things that go up in value. Why would we want a government regulated debt tender <laughs> that's backed by a bank that's going to decrease in value? Mm -hmm. Right. And people are fed up with it because 20 years ago, if you made 30 grand as a middle income earner in the United States, fast forward to today, you're making I mean, uh, 30 grand. Fast forward to today, you're making 35. You're, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Even though you made, even when you got a 1,000 or whatever bonus percentage per year. You're, you're making less and less money because it's, your, your money is worth less and less and less as we go. 
Um, so the next, what, gosh, couple decades, your dollar or the dollar is going to be worth a fraction of what is what it is today, and digital currency is going to be worth hundredfold, a thousandfold more. So which wow. one do you want to hold? I mean, it's going to shift, and as the shift happens, you want to be part of the early adoption of the shift. And the super early adopters, like the point one percent that got it in two thousand nine, multiple uh, decamillionaires. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean. There was a、uh, video that was posted on social media the other day about a London home being sold for five thousand Bitcoin, which is equivalent to twenty nine million dollars USD. But they were literally like, "We will take five thousand Bitcoin right now. Like, if you guys have five thousand, this property, this twenty nine million dollar property, is yours." Wow. Yeah, and because they know that there's certain people in the world, they're all. Hiding per se, not really hiding, but why would they? I mean, they're done, right? You 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 mine thousands of these coins in 2009 for nothing. Like we're talking about, you can get 10,000 of these coins in like an hour in 2009 because they were worth nothing. But 10,000 of these coins today, yeah, it's like a hundred million. What's what's the math on that? Somebody pull out a calculator. What's、yeah. what's five thousand for some fun math sake? Let's do a, multiply that real quick. What's ten thousand coins? Multiplied by five thousand eight hundred fifty-eight million. Yeah. In two thousand nine, you can、uh, there was a there was a pizza that was traded.、Um, it was a、uh, two pizzas that was purchased in two thousand ten for ten thousand Bitcoin. Two pizzas. Really? Yeah. There was a transaction that was made. It was Pizza Hut or somebody because they wanted they wanted <laughs> to get in and test it out. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, there's people that have accounts. And it's and then they would like.、Um, I have friends that <laughs> on social media they'd be like, "Yeah, my professor told me to buy like a hundred dollars of this coin back in 2012. Told me it was going to be a big thing. I don't even know where it is because like you know we don't know what wallet it's holding in, but like it's worth apparently 1.3 million. I just have to figure out how to access oh it. Oh my gosh! A hundred dollars, 2010. You know." Wow, or 2012 or whatever. So yeah. So、um, let's let's finish this off with if you、yeah. if somebody like me is just getting into it. Like I said, I was just kind of testing out my Coinbase account, so I bought fifty dollars of Bitcoin.、Mm-hmm. But for somebody like me who's just starting out, what would be your advice? Like the you know, moving、okay. forward. So, and now people <laughs> are gonna hate me for saying this, but. When you're putting a weekly part of income into a 401k or into something that is outdated, like Social Security or all these systems that won't, we don't even know if it's going to be around or having sustained, sustained for the far future. If you could take that, not saying all of it, right? Take a portion of it and move it into crypto every single week, okay? But instead of、so、automatic, it, automatic deposit. Yes. But instead of because fifty dollars, I mean, today is worth point zero 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 one of a Bitcoin. Yeah. And even if Bitcoin takes off by ten ten times, five hundred bucks is not going to set you free. Yeah. So you would put it in your wallet, but not only do you put it in your wallet, but you find a third party company、um, that trades it and mines it on autopilot into their pooling systems, right? So like we're talking about the big farms. Yeah. If you had access to a big farm. Mining farm, and they were able to do what you want them to do without you technically needing to set anything up, and they would get paid a majority, and you would get paid a minority of your coin back in coins per day, and accumulates. You can compound your coin. It's similar to like a 401k, right? They're gonna they're gonna put into the market, they're gonna trade it around, they're gonna try to earn you six percent or eight percent a year, and then over the course of nine years, at eight percent you double your money, and another nine years you double your money. So ten thousand goes to twenty thousand goes to forty thousand. And so eventually, as you keep putting in a little bit more, what you put in, which is maybe a hundred thousand in the lifetime, is worth now a million because they're they're trading on on the market. People are getting financially free a lot faster with crypto tra- crypto trading, crypto automatic trading and mining because、um, it's more volatile.、Mm-hmm. So instead of doing eight、um, percent, instead of doing eight percent a a year, I have systems in place where I'm doing twenty percent a month. But it's, but it's crypto, so it's you're getting paid in. You're also getting paid in crypto. You're not getting paid in USD that decreases in value. You're getting paid in crypto in your account, which 
as a trend to increase in value. So whatever you've made on the on the uh, investments, okay, as it grows, now think about if crypto goes from 5k to 50k, what you had that grew through the tra trading and farming automatic now just 10 times. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there a third party um, farming? You're saying that the massive um, mining farms is that what they're called? Yeah, there's mining pools. Or mining, mining pools. There's mining pools. Then there's companies that have that have software, like it's like proprietary software that trades and and mines and combines it and utilizes the entire market to predict where it's going to be most profitable. Right. Using using algorithms, using um, mathematical equations on a computer, which is a lot more, more than what we can do on a human mind. Mm -hmm. So if they have a proprietary systems and they can constantly produce, instead of funding it from the banks, which the banks don't even like crypto, you know, the uh, the next question is like, why aren't these companies just funding it from a, taking a bank loan? And like, why would a bank loan you 20 million when you're going to put it into cryptocurrency, which is unregulated, you know, yeah. it's regulation versus unregulation. I mean, a bank will, will lend you out 20 million to, you know, open up, like a massive restaurant chain or, or things that the government can have a control over but it's so decentralized it's almost like the black market of currency right that's initially what was it was thought of in the beginning but now since it's so widely accepted more and more people are considering the options of should i actually move a percentage of what i'm making here mm -hmm. will that have a better possibility of setting me financially free than putting it into these other vehicles that the government told me will be be around when I retire, like Social Security, Medicaid, and 401ks, right. and pension plans. Right. So is there a mining pool or a mining farm or software that you would recommend? Like so, for somebody like me who's just started and I decide, okay, I'm going to do an automatic payment every week from my bank account into my coins. Right. So there's a couple. It really depends on... It would have to be a different conversation because it depends on your needs. Because I'm in like three or four different ones right now. And when I have a conversation with somebody, it's your risk, high risk, high reward, low risk. You want Bitcoin, you want to do a different coin. There's all of these options. And I just started touching these not too long ago. So um, it really would be before I really tell somebody to shift into this pools or these mm -hmm. systems, these automated systems, I always tell people one, you have to understand that cryptocurrency is a very, very volatile, high risk, high reward platform. So if you're the type of person that can't afford to lose 50 bucks, uh, I, I would just leave it in a bank account, right? Mm -hmm, right. Um, if you're the type of person that's a low risk, low reward, then I would continue to do the 401ks because they're producing you 6% or 8% a year. Um, if you're the type of person that's like, okay, well, I want $100 a day paid to me in crypto, what will I need to put and how will I, how long will I need to hold it there to get me there? Or some people are like, I had a guy reach out to me today and was like, I want a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin in six months worth of Bitcoin in six months. How do I get there utilizing your systems? And I was like, well, that's a very, you know, $50, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> we have a, we have to have a different conversation because it's a whole different strategy to get there. Um, so it's really, it gets really in depth. Once it's laid out, then it's like different different areas. But people that are watching this, I would just uh, to start to get some info, just Google mining pools, okay? Mm -hmm. And you will see a whole bunch of options. Um, there's hundreds of these, okay? So cool. Google, um, or just look up online like cryptocurrency trading, right? So then there's platforms that will teach you how to do it. And then there's platforms that will do it automatically, um, things like that. So there's okay. there's a lot of options. So if people wanted to contact you to hire you to coach them, sure. How would they get in touch with you? Yeah. So I coach on a wide variety of topics, and my main platform would be thinkexceptionally.com. Um, that's where I get a lot of my leads. That's where people check out my motivational content, my blog sites, and things like that. Um, there's a contact me section on that page as well. Okay. 
I'm really active on social media. So it's just Thomas Wang. I'm usually the first one that comes up on all search engines and bars and everything. So I'm so active on Instagram, um, uh, Facebook, especially. So contact me there, or you can reach out to Kelsey and have her. I'll pass you, I'll pass them along to you. But yeah, Think Exception will be a great, great starting point just because a lot of my content's there and okay. there's a contact me section so I can kind of um, filter it in. My handles for social media is Thomas Success Wang. So if they wanted to find me on Instagram or on Facebook, it's, you can find me utilizing that handle as well. Thomas Success Wang. Yes. And that was a, a, an adopted middle name because I feel as an Asian American, side personal story for 30 seconds, as an Asian American, we're typically not born with American middle names because it's a very American traditional thing to do. We're born with Asian middle names. So we're, we have like, we have a first middle and last name in our Asian language or Chinese language. So being without a middle name, I was like, okay, what can I, cause everyone always asks me, what's your middle name, right? What can I set that's challenging that I can always fall back to and go, no, this is the standard. I have to be a success in whatever I do rather than just being another Thomas Wang. Cause there's, there's hundreds of Thomas Wangs. It's a very common name. Right, Thomas right. is one of the most common English names and Wang is one of the most common Chinese last names. So my girlfriend is now, cause she doesn't have an American middle name either. So <laughs> hers is Kim self-made Tran. Nice. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so that was fun. Yes, that was Thomas Success Wang. <laughs> I love that. Um, that was so great. Thank you so much. I feel like I might, um, you know, get in touch with you for even like a couple more calls because I feel like you're, you know, you have so much knowledge about this, and um, you know, and and I've learned a lot. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem. I look forward to the recording of this, and I hope. Everybody watching this in the future understands that one, it's 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 the new revolution of currency. It's here. You got to get involved, even if it's fifty dollars just to try it out. Uh, two, there is a lot of options. Okay, you can get your own mining software. You can buy it and hold it. You can trade it. You can barter it. You can be like, oh, I'll do a coaching service for you know one Bitcoin or whatever. Like you can barter barter it right now. Um, you can trade, you can auto trade it. There's a lot of these options. So I don't want anyone to ever feel like it's overwhelming because once you start mm -hmm. using a smartphone, then a smartphone becomes your life. Once you start using uh, PayPal, then PayPal becomes a common transaction. Once you start using digital currency, it becomes a commonality, but you're going to get rewarded a lot more for being the early adopter of this because we're talking about actual financial digital wealth right and do you think by even now it's the end of 2017 that we're still in the be and, and and bitcoin is worth six thousand mm dollars -hmm. we're still in the beginning phases like there's still a lot of room for us to use this as um a wealth creator yes it's going to be high risk high reward wealth creator so if you talk about if you talk to any financial advisor there's low risk medium risk high risk this is always going to be a high risk high reward and it should never be your full portfolio. So right. if you're talking about a couple percentages, you know, less than 5% into the crypto market, fantastic. But where is it going to go in the next five, 10 years? It's purely speculation based off of a lot to do with the governments. Okay. Why I say this is because there's governments that hate it and there's governments that love it. There are smart governments that I like Sweden and certain companies that are buying Bitcoin in bulk to get out of debt. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of banks trying wealth. to innovate because it's kind of similar, and I use this analogy in one of my other videos, it's kind of like the Blockbuster Netflix thing, right? Like Blockbuster mm -hmm. passed on the opportunity to buy Netflix. I think at that point it was like for for 50 million, right? And so mm -hmm. now Blockbuster is completely, you know, doesn't business. exist anymore. And Netflix is multi, multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. And I feel like if banks and, and you know, and, the government, but if banks specifically are, if they're smart and they can innovate, mm. then, you know, they won't be, um, become, you know, like basically in, uh, essentially a blockbuster. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it'll become obsolete. Yes, definitely. It will have to happen soon. 
Um, if banks and governments decide to adopt it and, and hybrid it, they're going to walk away with a surplus. Right. If they try to deny it, the people don't care. I mean, what the banks think at the end of the day, they want their wealth to grow and they're going to shift their assets to wealth generating vehicles. Right. And governments as well. Governments are the ones that are buying Bitcoin in bulk. China is a huge farmer of Bitcoin. Like the, the number one, I think is China. Number two is the United States as far as farming it right now, mining it. Right. And um, if you're a government and you say, well, we know that this is going to explode if we hold a certain percentage of our entire country in this currency and it explodes, who's getting out of debt faster? <laughs> you know? And then exactly. who's getting left behind and getting buried in debt by holding paper dollars? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, it's interesting. Well, yeah. thank you, Thomas. I really appreciate your time. This is such a great discussion. I learned a lot, and I know our viewers will as well. And I feel like, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm already excited for our next conversation if uh, if you're up for one. Fantastic. We'll have to schedule one out for sure. And for those watching, thanks so much for taking the time to learn more about cryptocurrency. And if you're a woman watching this, definitely don't be scared get involved download the wallet it's free start with fifty dollars like kelsey did <laughs> and just try it out and you who knows you might you might say wow my fifty dollars turned into a hundred in a month what happened <laughs> exactly and i definitely plan on investing more but i wanted to try, test it out and i felt fifty dollars was you know um it was just great for me to, it, to play around with it's a good start right it is because one of these uh, systems I'm in, the beginning starting package is 60. So a lot of people are like, okay, 60. And then they see the return and they see it like they're getting more and more Bitcoin. And they're like, okay, I can definitely put more into this because it's like you're compounding rather than growing linear. We want to compound growth. That's and it. in the crypto market, compounding is a lot faster. Right. Awesome. All right. All right, Thomas. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care, guys. Take care. See ya.